my name is Rick and welcome to section 4.2 creating a MinIO goals application from scratch. So last time we left off by creating a, our th inserting our theme into our application and in this video I want to do a little bit things a little bit different because I'm noticing that uh, certain videos are go getting uh, pretty lengthy in time as far as uh, you know the last video was over half an hour long. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go ahead and, and write the part of the code that needs to get created. And then I'll do essentially like a code review slash summary of what I did in order to accomplish that. So right now I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the authentication system that I went ahead and created for my application. Because my application has very specific requirements. I'm only going to have one admin and the admin will be able to authenticate, log out, log in, that type of thing. But since my application is not going to be uh, open to the public, only to certain individuals, I'm going to go ahead and create a custom role called admin and essentially only allow those individuals to enter the application. And this is, this, this is one of the aspects of the application that I did not perceive when I originally mocked up the prototypes, is how can we restrict access to everyone except only the right user can sign up at the admin group. Since I didn't think about this, um, I went ahead and created essentially a workaround to get past this. Before I show you that workaround, I'm going to go ahead and show you kind of what I've done so far. So I'm going to go back here into our application and I'm going to go into and we're going to go into packages. And the ones that we're going to be working with is this access package and this users package and a little bit of the system one. And inside the user one, I actually went ahead and did a couple things. Let me go ahead and show you what I did. In the app.js, I went ahead and cleaned this uh, file up with just remove the comments that was de by default there. On the controllers, I went ahead and created a new action called validate code. So if, I, if we go back to the application here, let me go into the application here, and you go into the sign up form. Um, give this one second to load. Sign up. And as you can see, we have the secret invitation code. And this secret invitation code corresponds to this. Uh, uh, action here which is called validate code obviously this is not the code that I'm actually going to use this is just a dummy code that I'm using for now and what it's essentially checking is checking if that secret is equal to this code and if it is then I go ahead and actually register you into the account and if it's not I'm gonna go ahead and throw you a 403 and say invalid code so in order to make this work I have to actually uh, change my model to fit what I want my username to represent and what I want is I want essentially a invitation code, a username, email, a name, password, and a, and and that's about it. So if you go into model user, and we look at the schema, we have this secret, and this is string. We have a username, we have an email, we have a name, we have roles, and we have a password, and we have a provider. Great. So now we want to match our routes in order for this to happen. And as you can see right here, I am setting up the user's API. And what essentially this is saying is pretty much when you go to register, it's going to go into register, it's going to validate the code, and it's going to make sure that it is a valid code. And if it is, then it's going to go ahead and register, register, in, register into the application. So if you go into this, let's go ahead and I'll show you kind of what I mean here. So we're going to go into controllers. And we're going to get the secret code, put that in there, and then I'm going to create a username. So I'm going to call it foo, and foo at bar.com, and then name is going to be foo, and then password is going to be fake, and then fake. And then essentially this is going to work, but I'm actually going to go ahead and raise the Z so you can, you can actually see that error that we're returning back as a JSON object saying invalid code. But you must be saying, how is this getting rendered? So if you go into public views, and you go to register, we have pretty much this mock-up HTML that I actually went ahead and put into the application um, separately because I don't want to actually go and do this. These videos are not about HTML. You can figure this out yourself. But pretty much we're registering this controller, controller, register controller, and here's that register controller. And right here we're doing this uh, post to register. And when we post, we're sending over the secret, the username, the email, the name, and the password, and the confirmation to the password. And if it's successful, it goes ahead and does uh, it logs you in. But if it's not successful, then it goes ahead and puts the message into this data message uh, object. So if you go back into the template of register 
And as you can see, we have this message right here being outputted into our view. So now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, go ahead and enter that. And then this should go ahead and sign me up. Create an account for me and log me in. But right now, if you do a refresh, uh, it's still not... Uh, we still have to work out a couple more issues, but essentially it's uh, it's it's pretty much at the point where um, we can log in and log out type of deal. So if you come back here and we do uh, foo and we do our password, see we can log in like we you thought you like you can normally in a system. So if you click on login, you won't be able to go there or join because there's actually uh, intercept that's actually catching that and sending you back to the root, which is kind of what we want it to happen, but not completely. So we're going to go ahead and log back out and I'm going to go ahead and log in. And last time you guys didn't see this template set that, that I went ahead and integrated it. And um, pretty much you got your forgot password, you got your sign up, you got your login type of deal. Um, and as you can see, I went ahead and um, I'm not logging in with an email like the original project comes with. I'm actually, I'm actually doing it based on a username and a password. And the way you change this is you have to actually change this in a couple with different places. In this auth controller, you want to go into server controllers, users, and right where we go create. Nope. We're going to go into, let's see, routes, and then we're going to go into login. Right here, we're saying passport authenticate local. So if you go back here into this uh, access folder that I was talking to you about earlier, if you go down into server no access server config and then passport right here is where we're saying uh, use local strategy and we're using a username and a password instead of an email and a password and you got to make sure that you pass this in and you tell uh, your MongoDB object to search for that uh, username instead of an uh, instead of a password so that's kind of what's happening there um, so it's a little bit different than we originally uh, skipped out. But that's it for uh, authentication. Um, as far as the system is concerned, you can sign up, log in, forget your password, and so on and so forth. So that's it for this video. Uh, make sure you stay tuned for section 4.3, where we're actually going to go ahead and start building some of the some of the core components of the application. Now that we got our, our authentication system in place, we can go ahead and move next to the to the next part of our system, which would be creating our public facing pages and our private uh, uh, actions that are gonna be doing the CRUD uh, on the database. So till then, we'll see ya.